Hi everyone, happy Friday. Um, so today I'm going to be chatting to my lovely friend Callum from the Yorkshire Bartender, who um, I've worked with for many years on lots of different weddings, mainly marquee weddings, um, and he brings in his team of um, amazing staff to do all with your bar drinks, um, cocktails. Um, not only does he do that, does master classes in cocktail making um, and all sorts. So I'm hoping he's going to uh, be watching and join us very soon. I did have to explain how to do all this to him. Hi to everyone watching. Hi, cousin. <laughs> nice of you to be watching. I'll just see if he's there. There you go, you can see there now. This is how to fill time when the person you went to be chatting to is not there. Go on Callum, right, I'll try and chat away about drinks. So um, I always find when couples are having um, a marquee wedding and uh, it might be at home, um, which is what Callum and I were discussing today. We've got a bride next year who's um, the wedding is in a teepee in their back garden. So they were discussing whether they're going to bring all their drinks, um, buy them all themselves, maybe go to France if they can and do a booze cruise, bring it all back. And then Callum's team would, would serve all the drinks, um, and run the bar for them. They've now decided actually it's probably a bit easier if, um, if he just runs it all. He will then source all the drinks that they want. Um, so they might have gone and done some wine tasting and then he will, um, source those wines and then uh, bring them all, serve them, chill them um, <clears throat> and work on it that way. So there's lots of different options you can do with drinks um, and obviously it's quite popular now to do a cocktail hour, very American after dinner. Um, quite often my couples do a bride's um, cocktail, a groom's cocktail um, or you can just have cocktails all night. Um, and he did, Callum did bring in um, from one of my weddings a few years ago, um, Hi everybody who's watching or waving. Um, yeah, for a few years ago, he, he did bring in his amazing um, espresso martini machine, so, um, which is fantastic. If you're looking at his Instagram page, there's a few um, clips, video clips on there. So uh, basically, um, I was at the church uh, with the couple and they'd just come out of the church and um, they were standing in the beautiful kind of archway at the front of the church and I took a photo of them and then I sent it to Callum on a special app and then he managed to print that picture of them outside the church uh, ready for their cocktails when they arrived for their drinks reception, which was quite cool. Um, and everybody was like, how on earth did you do that? And it wowed all the guests and it was pretty amazing. And then throughout the evening, the guests could send their own pictures if they wished to, um, that they took of the bride and groom, or you can imagine it got quite silly. Um, oh, he's joined. Um, yeah, it got quite silly with pictures you could send to the machine and then have printed on your own personal uh, espresso martini, which was fab. Right, I'll see if I can get him to join and he can chat away about drinks. There we go. Hopefully. Bye, magic. <laughs> should be there. Connecting. Oh, sorry. Oh. Two seconds. Hi, two seconds, Callum. Two seconds. Oh, we're sideways. We are sideways. There we go. Um, you put it portrait. Okay, two seconds. Two seconds. Oh, look, you've got your bar all set up. I do, I do, I do. Um, it would have helped if I set it up the right way. I'm new That's to Instagram right. Live. <laughs> And sporting a rather new look. We had an accident with some clippers yesterday. So oh, wow, look at you. I know, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Not, not very much hair, but um, but yeah, we'll kind of go. That's right. right, you can still make cocktails and chat exactly, about Exactly, exactly. Hey, we're we'll not going oh, to the barber. Oh, the bar looks cool. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Let me just find something to prop this up with. Um, do, do, do sex, the flat. <laughs> it's all there about you doing the wedding trade, think on your feet. Exactly, something like that. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Let's see if you can see me. Wonderful. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yeah, see you. Wonderful. Can see you. Perfect. Yeah. How are you doing? You all right? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah. Oh, I say that I'm good. Oh, I tell you what, Lucy, I'm having no luck. I thought I'd be really clever and set my bar up, and it's obviously not worked. Oh. Um, boom, boom, boom. I'll try That's it again. Right. Technology doesn't work for me, I tell you. <laughs> um, were you talking about the printer the other day, just a minute ago? I 
talking about the wedding, yeah, when we were doing the printing and the espresso martinis. Oh, that was cracking fun. I mean, it was a bit mental, I'm not going to lie, trying to print off that many espresso martinis because everyone wanted a picture with their own face on. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it was good fun. I enjoyed it. Um, lovely. Try again. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. There we go. That looks like it's not going to fall. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. We'll see. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite a good wedding, that one. Um, but, yeah, always trying to do some funky things. But, yeah, how are you? How are things? Yeah, good, thank you. All um, just, yeah, uh, busy still. Um, just, uh, yeah, trying to chat to people on video calls and stuff and um, and get loads of paperwork done. My thought is I'm just going to take this kind of quiet as in no event time to yeah. kind of get everything, all my timelines and everything ready for next year so that because next year is going to be manic, which I can't wait for, I'm really oh, looking it's going to be for insane. I've got to be ready with all my... Yeah. Logistic. We're we're exactly the same. I, I mean, my diary is getting crazy already. Um, yeah. it, it, we've got to work out how we're going to manage it because it's going to be it's going to be pretty intense. But I'm excited for it. I'm um, I'm gutted not to be ready for this season because we were just getting ready to gear up for the season. Like well, uh, we had a wedding with you what two weeks before it all kicked off, uh, and that's yeah. really the start of the season. Um, so for it all to go was a bit bit of a shame. Um, but it just means I'm more hungry for next year as such. Yeah, yeah, and you've got to think of different different things you can do, can't you? I mean, we were going to have a cocktail masterclass, weren't we? Yeah, literally that week, wasn't it? Yeah, so that was a shame. But I was saying that to you when I sent you over my questions about different things that you do as well. So, yeah. getting on to the questions, tell everybody yeah. um, how did the Yorkshire bartender start and how long yeah. have you been? So, um, so I started Yorkshire bartender back in 2016. Um, I've done a couple of gigs for some other guys that ran some of our bars. Um, and I was actually looking for a mobile bar for my wedding. Um, and working in the bar trade, I couldn't really find anything that related back to what I wanted from a bar for my wedding. Yeah. Um, at the same time, um, as I said, I was doing a couple of gigs for some other people, and I wasn't overly impressed with the, the kind of the service that was coming from that. And since then, those companies actually um, don't exist anymore, yeah. um, which is interesting. Um, so, yeah, so on the back of that, I kind of thought, well, I might as well give it a go. Um, if anything, it's a little bit of extra money to pay for Becky's dress, uh, my wife's yeah. dress, because that was far too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> um, aren't they all? Um, but it was just to, kind of to dip my toes in the water. Um, and I did that for two years of dipping my toes in the water, which is quite a long time. Um, yes. And it got to a point where I think we had 100 events on and I was still working full time and basically whenever I could answering emails and um, running around on a Friday night trying to get mask tasks sorted and setting a team off and I had a fully functioning business whilst also working full-time for another company and it was just I was splitting myself too much um so I went full-time with Yorkshire bartender and um really got to kind of deliver what I was after from a wedding bar um we treat Yorkshire bartender a lot like caterers treat um an event as such, a bar company, companies are normally a side for. Um, they normally kind of rock up. Um, sometimes they can be seen as a one man in his van. I know horse trailers were really, really popular a couple yeah, of Yeah, they were, years. weren't they? And I think people just assume that you do the bar companies out of your, out of your garage um, or out of your home. And actually, for two years, I was doing that out of my garage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but I think that's the point of a lot of businesses. Um, but I wanted to get away from that. I wanted Yorkshire Barton to treat, so treat it like caterers and, and look at some of the top caterers in the country and in the county, definitely, and kind of look at how they approach weddings, how they, um, how they get past the challenges that come from weddings, because weddings offer a lot of challenges and how they navigate those to, to ensure that a wedding runs smoothly. Yeah. Um, um. Now, as, as I just said, like weddings are, there's a lot of issues can arise during a wedding. Um, and more so on the bar, as I'm sure you can imagine, lots of things can go wrong really, really quickly on the bar. Running out of stock, how, how are you supposed to know what stock do you need for a wedding? What do you know, what's going to be drunk the most? Uh, no one's going to know um, until we're actually there on that scene. So managing that and navigating that, it's, mm. it's, it's a difficult process. And it really, um, the, the idea of Yorkshire Bartender was to kind of try and get away from that stress and manage it so that we knew exactly when we went to that wedding what was going to be drunk. We'd had those consultations with the bride and groom. They told us what they want from their wedding, what their guests are going to drink. We understand when every single bit of alcohol is going to be delivered at what time, um, how we can change their event. So how we, my motto with the event is um, to make 
drink drink extraordinary. Yeah. So I, I don't want to just provide a drink. I want to provide something that creates an experience. Yeah. Um, and you can do that through catering, but I think bars is just passing the beer over or passing the gin and tonic. And actually, as we were saying before about the printing cocktails, you can be very, very creative with your drink. Yeah. And you should be. Everyone should be. Yeah. It's one part of the day where you definitely can just have a bit yeah. of fun with with what you have like you know your kind of standard drinks and everything but you yeah. can definitely have fun with it and, and even down to the kind of beautiful glassware that you provide yeah which is so different um uh to you know maybe like a well i don't know certain venues or, or hotels or something it's not that kind of classic look it's still lovely and people can have that but um yeah you can you can completely well, enhance I'm sure you've turned up to weddings in the past where potentially um, a bar's coming at the last minute. Yeah. The bars are provided their own glassware. And some of the times they're the cheap glass, but you may be hiring from Morrison's or Sainsbury's. Yeah. The short blue glasses and those those short and cheap and tacky wine glasses. Yeah. And you put so much effort and investment into a wedding to make it look beautiful and style it just the way you want it. Yeah. I've seen it so many times in the past where weddings have been let down by by the glassware yeah uh, it's such a small detail that people don't think about that actually makes a huge huge difference um it's, it's yeah. so we yeah um we've always invested really highly in our glassware like glassware's changed slightly over time um but we're still very familiar on it it's um normally heavy base uh, fine dining um, yeah and slightly well i like to just put that it looks classy um, yeah but it's just not out of um, it will fit in about whatever setting you do for, for your yeah, wedding. Exactly. And it's not always something, is it? It's like linen. When I chat to people about linen and they, and they do, until you kind of put the ideas in front of them and say, right, so what glassware? And they kind of just assume, right, well, we're just going to have standard. Or I say to them, right, well, what linen are you having? Well, just white. Well, actually, there's a whole world of other options. <laughs> yeah, off-white. <laughs> yeah, off-white. It's good to have different choices and things. Yeah, so, completely. So then there's so much involved then in the bar kind of um, setting of things. So what's like a typical um, week in the life of Yorkshire bartender kind of from, uh, you know, you've, you've kind of uh, had all consultations with your couple yeah. and getting ready for the weddings on Saturday, getting ready. What, what kind of, um, what kind of your, does your week look like with uh, yeah. Well, as I said, well, as you mentioned before, we've got the consultations with the bride and grooms, which you normally do six months in advance. So when we prepare for the week before the wedding, we know exactly what we need, uh, what needs to be delivered as and when. Um, yeah. So my bartenders, um, I see Dan's uh, watching the video. Um, who oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, my bartenders worked, uh, have the Sunday, Monday off, and then they start uh, working from the Tuesday through to the Saturday. Yeah, um, because of course, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> working late nights on the Saturday night. Um, now, normally Tuesday is uh, breaking down the vans, breaking down the bars, cleaning the glassware, and I'm sure you can imagine we have a lot of glass. Oh, yeah. Um, and Big then it's your glass washer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you paused. But do not disturb on them. It seems to have um, got through it. That's my um, that's my dad wanting to FaceTime a little one. Um, but yeah, so we uh, <laughs> I should probably tell him I'm doing this. Um, but yes, yeah, so we go through the glass wash. Um, so I think we have tons and tons of glass. I mean, we've got thousands of glasses to get through normally on the Tuesday. Um, and then what we'd normally start doing is get that away and start packing the van for the next event. So Tuesday, Wednesday usually incurs most of the packing, cleaning away, stocking for the next event. Having yeah. stock delivered for that event because, of course, We've got a relatively large warehouse. Yeah. Um, that stock that we're rotating throughout a week is um, is quite silly. So mm. we've all got um, large pallet orders of alcohol coming through. Yeah. Um, so having to try and navigate that in the warehouse and, um, and ship it out back into the vans. Yeah. Uh, and normally that lasts until Thursday. Um, so it does a lot of prepping, making sure everyone's alcohol's in the right place because we offer bespoke services. Yeah. So our... Um, I'll, one bit, one client might have a certain type of ale on, uh, one client might want a certain cocktail, so they're all going to be picked slightly differently. As yeah. a and of um, course, you have one wedding in a, in a, on a Saturday, don't you? So you've got to make yeah. sure it's the right one. And Yeah, you yeah, tend to do up to five weddings on a Saturday. Um, so it's quite a nice job um, with navigating that, because when mm. we've agreed a menu, we will need to make sure that we're delivering that. 
And if we're missing one bottle of alcohol off that, then we can't deliver that cocktail. And so yeah. the chef, um, they can't deliver the food item. Yeah. Um, so it's really important that every single item has been delivered across there in the van to navigate it. Um, yeah. That was, um, when I, especially when I was working full time, that was a logistical nightmare. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, I, um, I had some, a wonderful team last year who navigated that really, really, really well. Um, and we're kind of picking that up full, fully now. So we've got a full time um, event coordinator. Um, and she just focuses solely on making sure that the pick lists are right, the everything the client wants and needs yeah. is detailed um, to the T. And then I can just have my warehouse manager pick it up, go yeah. through it and get it out. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, from Thursday, we usually set it up. Um, as yeah. you rightly said, we, um, we, we have multiple weddings on a, on a Saturday. Um, and we, we never set up on the day. Um, I set up on the day in my first year of weddings and noticed that that's a real difficulty. Um, it causes a lot of stress. It causes a lot of aggro. Um, mm. It's great for the couples to be able to see the bar and understand that they know that that's done. It's taken care yeah. of. It's going to arrive from it and sort it. Yeah. For you, it's, it's less of a stress. Yeah. Um, so we usually start doing our setups on a Thursday. Thursday, Friday will be setups. Um, and then Saturday will be delivery. Um, yeah. So bartenders normally arrive two to three hours in advance of the wedding. Um, that'll be prepping up the mint, getting the eyes prepped, final little bits that we might have left um, at the unit back into the uh, to the wedding. And then when it hits, um, when reception time, we're ready to pour the drinks. Yeah. Uh, and then it's normally through till 12 o'clock or one o'clock, um, depending on what people are doing with the drinks. Yeah. Um, we close the bar down on the night. Um, more so from a logistics perspective, it doesn't make sense to kind of take one van over yeah. the next day. Um, yeah. yeah, completely. Um, from a from a cost perspective, it's more cost efficient. Um, from a fuel perspective and an economy, it's yeah, more efficient. Um, and also for the bartenders as well, it's easy just to break it up. They don't want to be going the next yeah. day. They They'll usually get home. Okay. End of the night. Yeah. After find that when they sure. yeah, don't want to just go i'm like no i'd rather get everything done and not have to return if i don't if i don't need to sometimes i do have to return but i think it's yeah better to yeah. just yeah, and, i've then, seen a couple of your weddings where you've probably had to return they've been a it's been a bit of a messy affair as such oh uh, yeah been some yeah. good pies yeah um, but no you're right it's um it's just easy to just get it done um sometimes i don't think the bartenders appreciate having to pack down at two in the morning or one in the morning mm -hmm. Um, it's it's a bit of a slog, but if we all chip in together, get it out, yeah. um, and then we're ready to start the next day. Um, yeah. So so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of time, a lot of investment kind of goes into the behind the scenes. Um, yeah. It's crazy, and kind of people look at where where costs are associated for bars. Um, but before mm. we even pour the pint, and before stock is costing us anything, we we usually spend about a thousand pounds. Yeah. Um, just on the bartender's time of setting up the bartenders for you. Yeah. Um, I always, always overstaff my bars. Yeah, uh, that's I yeah. Have more bartenders than less. Yeah, question we discussed a while ago, wasn't it? A few mm. weeks ago, when, with one of our our clients. Um, so, so that so I suppose yes, there's so much um involved. It's not. It's like every supplier I've spoken to on my um chats that that trying to kind of educate couples and and kind of it's not just what happens on the day. There is so much, uh, you know, work and involvement beforehand. Um, yeah planning and ordering the drinks and everything but what would you say to um because this is probably as a planner the biggest question i get from couples um or kind of um thought process they go through um is oh you've paused again sorry lisa, I my, uh, <laughs> sorry, lisa that my uh, my phone was going to 20 percent battery i'm telling you I'm oh, yeah. my oh it's fine well we won't be we'll be we won't go over 20 percent you'll be fine <laughs> so, <laughs> We were cut off before. Yeah, just, yeah, so I was saying. So I just so um, yeah. So a lot of couples come to me and they kind of um, a, a kind of when it comes to the drinks, think right. Well, we're just going to go and buy all our own, which yeah. is something I've been discussing with a client recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I'm going to go and buy all my own drinks, and then I'll just get some. Either either they say, um, oh well, we'll just do it as self service. And then I point out, well, there's a lot of clearing up to do. Who's refreshing everything? Who's yeah. looking? or they say well we'll just get the company in to just um just have the staffing of it and that's yeah. all great in theory but actually there's so much work involved in that and they have to have the right quantities and then you have more of a risk of running stuff out of running 
uh, stuff running out. So what would you say to those couples um, that, that I get that kind of are going, they don't know whether to go down getting you to the whole thing yeah. or them to provide the alcohol and you just to serve, uh, you know, serve it? I mean, with regards to any wedding, it's the, what the client wants is kind of what we're trying to put, provide. Yeah. Um, and dry hire, we've done dry hire many times in the past and for some clients it works really, really well. Um, we normally provide pick lists so people can we'll provide shopping lists and let them sort it. Um, yeah. They have it all delivered to the site and we'll just deliver that, that service. That being said, um, you're completely right. What happens if they run out? Now mm. our pick list will kind of accommodate for overstocking, but even then like, we've, I've seen some weddings where they've been particularly, particularly um, boozy. Um, yeah. As I'm sure, as I'm sure, sure you have. Couples don't know. They might assume, oh, well, everyone will be drinking this, but then also the weather. You know, if it's a really hot day, there's more drunk or, you know, yeah. there's all, all sorts of factors. It, it ultimately is safer, isn't it, if you guys do it, but, you yeah, know. The and oh, yeah. actually, um, when you start taking into consideration the cost of the serving and the ice and the cleaning up and the rubbish yeah. removal and everything else, um, a lot of the time, you're providing yourself a bit of hassle having to get the alcohol because they kind of weigh up. Um, now, I think with regard to budgeting for a wedding at a club bar, um, you have to be realistic with it. Um, yeah. The way I look at it is say, look, how much would you be willing to spend at a wedding? Um, most people are usually between 20 and 30 pounds um, for a couple of pints, maybe a gin and tonic and one for the missus or whatnot. Um, and then you've got to think, okay, so that's what you're willing to spend. Then you've also got your half bottle of wine that you'll have been drinking at your table. And then you've also got your reception drink, which you probably have two glasses of Prosecco or champagne. Yeah, yeah. Drink. So there you've got 40 to 50 pounds per, per head. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of what you wouldn't spend. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say when you're looking at bars and the cost of alcohol, um, you, you, you shouldn't, um, some people devalue what the actual cost of alcohol may be and, and think uh, that their tabs are, or well, not their tabs, but their bar spend is a is reasonable at a thousand pounds or two thousand pounds or whatnot. Yeah. Um, and all I say is that the bar is one of the most important days of your or parts of your wedding. Yeah. Um, drink makes a huge difference to how a party party goes. Yeah. Uh, so just to consider that. Um, in terms of um, providing the alcohol yourself versus providing the alcohol um, for us to provide it as such, or a bar company to provide it, mm. there are things such as who's going to clean up. If we're not cleaning up, who's going to clean up? Who's going to remove all the rubbish at the end of the day? How yeah. are you going to remove that rubbish? Who's going to look after the glasses? Who's going to clean those glasses and keep them rotating? Because, of course, you're going to need those glasses cleaned even more so now. How are you managing that cleaning process, especially with regards to everyone worrying about um, the current situation? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's an area that bars and caterers and everyone really needs to start considering is how do we manage our hygiene on site in the field um, yeah. during this time? And that's something we're taking into a lot of consideration, and I am. And I'm trying to trying to just build upon. Um, mm. You've got things such as if you run out of alcohol, what do you do? Um, yeah. We don't run out out of alcohol because we've got a warehouse full of it. So we overstock um, uh. by 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 far too much. As my bartenders will probably tell you when they see the vans and they yeah. see the amount of alcohol left over. But we'd rather not run out. Yeah. Um, safer to overstock the van isn't it and have it on site and take it back with you than have the kind of well embarrassment of running out but that's the thing if if the couple insist on they they get your suggested pit yeah. list and they go and buy their own have you ever had it where you have run out and it's a really difficult position for you to be in because you're the, the guests might not know that actually the couple yeah. went and put all the alcohol they yeah. just you're the barman you've run out of you've run out of beer what yeah. okay, so yeah. Deal with that though. Yeah, I mean, we have we have in the past, and we actually we've just run out and got some more. Um, right. But you you don't have the conversation with the with the couple and just saying, look, we've run out, um, we need to get some more. And we don't really want to be bothering the couple too much on the day. Yeah. And probably thinking about the bar as such. It also having to go out and get more removes a member of staff from the bar. Yeah. Um, and it, it just slows service down. Um, it's and I mean you you'll know as much as i will like some of the weddings that we've had are in quite remote areas yeah so out of alcohol and going out to get alcohol it yeah. might not be an option yeah um, so 
find the yeah. right stuff. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, there are all these things that you kind of, it's, it's how do you navigate that? And that's half of what preparing with meetings with yourself and with us is all about is kind of looking at what's your plan A, what's your plan B, what's your plan yeah. C. And make yeah. sure that everything is kind of known. And you probably need to go to plan E, plan, plan F with regards to weddings because there's yeah. so many things that can kind of change up until they're getting married. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah, it's kind of it, a lot of it is um, about preparation, I would say. Um, and that's why you work with people like ourselves, like you. Yeah. Is we've got so many years of experience doing this now. We've we've yeah. seen some of the hardships. We've gone through the hardships. Not everything's going to be perfect that we've done. Yeah. Um, we've learned yeah. a lot of lessons in that time. Yeah, definitely. That's it. You learn from every wedding, don't you? And mm -hmm. and yeah, I was saying this to to someone else recently that you just you'll never know everything about weddings because every mm -hmm. wedding is different. And mm -hmm. especially you know talking about the drinks, the guests. You know who who knows? It's like how long's a piece of string? Yeah. As to, you know. But so I suppose then that's on to the next question. How do you um? Well, a lot of couples, I suppose, have in mind the standard kind of like drinks reception. It yeah. seems it's Prosecco, it's beer, it's maybe sparkling elderflower as the soft option. But how do you um, or do you um, suggest alternatives and say, right, well, how about this? Or do you f follow with their ideas? Or do you or what did it, What if a couple came to you and said, right, we don't want what everyone else has. What would you suggest? For, like, yeah. Um we do that all the time. I mean, you know, that's exactly what I specialise in. And to be honest, what I enjoy the most, um, putting people's faces on espresso martinis was right up my street. Oh. Um, and we had to go out and get a machine from Italy to do that. We were yeah. doing printed faces, print faces on, uh, on beers before Guinness were, um, oh. which I quite enjoyed. Um, but yeah, it's... I'm finding a lot of married couples are starting to look further afield of what can they do. Yeah. Um, and I mean, our packages are really flexible anyway. We always offer a cocktail on arrival, our Yorkshire Garden, which is superb and everyone seems to enjoy. Yeah. Um, I know you've enjoyed it in the past. Yeah. Um, and we offer a beer or a Prosecco. So there is a nice option. That yeah. being said, I think more and more people are kind of going, how can they make their day more bespoke? Um, yeah. Things like cocktail hours instead of doing um, reception drinks are really, really nice. Um, yeah. I'm looking at options at how we can kind of develop outside reception bars. Um, reception bars in the bar in the past have been trellis tables with a bit of tablecloth. Can we make that? Can we improve that? Yeah, um, it works. Yeah. yeah, completely, completely. I've seen some lovely examples of some beautiful old bars that are outside with flower walls and neon signs and yeah. like that, or like prosecco walls. Um, yeah, walls. Right. yeah. Um, there's lots of options. I mean, we've got our our defender, um, which is always quite a nice option for outside. So I think there are lots of people are looking at ways and how they can can navigate their wedding and how they how they approach the drinks from a reception drink perspective and finding more and more couples are saying like look i don't like wine um mm -hmm. i'm providing wine because that's what was the norm yeah um, which is which is interesting um because wine with your wedding drinks is what's always been the case um so it's kind of offering options for that so we've been okay well why don't you have drinks tokens or an open bar or we can do yeah. table service um I, I mean you can still provide wine on that um on the on the tables for people that yeah want. if the guests the drink they want to drink because quite i find quite a lot of time people want to have a gin and tonic with their dinner and yeah, yeah not everyone drinks wine and then uh maybe more so recently uh you know you've had loads of wine left over because um it's not been what people wanted mm. Um, so yeah, doing the voucher system. Completely. Is... Or you could do things like um, corner jars with your with a <sighs> cabinet that people can kind of access. Or you could do mini bottles of gin and tonics on the table. Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there are a lot of options. Um, the most important thing is working out what the couple want from their day. Um, and that's yeah. what I put to my, all of my couples and say, look, it's your day. Um, you don't need to do what everybody else is doing. Exactly. Um, they, you, it's you need to make the most of your day. It's going to be something that you remember. Yeah. So how do you put your stamp on it? You don't like wine, then why are you paying for wine? Why are you, yeah. why are you drinking wine? Um, yeah. We're, you, as I said, people are here to celebrate you. So to so make it bespoke, um, we've, we've done pictures with people's faces on. We yeah. Had one wedding where we used the groom was an avid Sheffield Wednesday fan. So we put a Sheffield Wednesday logo on top of the cocktail. Oh, fun. 
Um, and they don't have to be cocktails, they could be lots of things. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, that's a lot of what our consultation meetings are for. They're so they last about an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, and we spend, uh, spend a lot of time working out how their day is going, um, what they're doing at every part of it, and then how we can make the bar bespoke to them throughout that day. Yeah. Um, we have standardised drinks and packages, um, as most bar companies do, but of course there is a level of that where you can change it to whatever you want. Yeah. That's good. So it's flexible. I think that's what couples need to remember, isn't it? And and the more more suppliers I speak to, they're kind of saying, you, it, well, especially um, I was speaking to Alice, lovely Alice from Homegrown Hospitality on Wednesday, and yeah. um, and she was saying, yeah, about especially about the food, you know, and it's the same for the drinks. The couple should choose what they like, and you yeah. know, we're in the kind of controversy between having lamb and yeah. or is it not? And, and and brides and grooms are always kind of trying please the masses and i think just it's your day you choose what you like you know if you want to have sushi um and you want to have cocktails and no wine then that's what you should do you know i did a wedding um a few years ago and it was all vegan um and it's just and you can do it it's about it's about you yeah. isn't it? we're so, doing a vegan wedding in um well we're supposed to be doing a wedding in, in august i think it's almost in november now um but we've sourced vegan wine or the alcohols to ensure that's all vegan um yeah. the vegan um and they said to us that it, they were vegan but they guess aren't so they were they were a bit um and are in whether or not that they wanted to go vegan i said look your wedding is yeah. vegan a big, big part of your life let's make it part of your wedding so yeah we've gone yeah. completely vegan on that on that, on that and moment. it shows you can do it and if it's, and not, it's very easy yeah if it's not to their guest's taste well <laughs> that's fine it's not yeah. there it's the couple's wedding so they should have what they want um yeah and actually a lot of things like that people don't even know the difference yeah no <laughs> they don't no so, so, yeah. so when you're kind of thinking of all these different ideas and stuff mm. um, so i put this question to you uh sent to you earlier um what who inspires you or what inspires you or where do you get your creativity or where do you look to because i know we're discussing um different like dresses and things australia pops up america for styling and oh, where yeah. i mean um i i love outdoor weddings for one um so i mean one of the problems with the uk is we can never rely on the weather yeah <laughs> um, but i absolutely love outdoor weddings so um from a styling perspective i've always been really interested in how um, a lot of the weddings in like america los angeles australia um, how they've been styled, that light, airy feel with lots of flowers, kind of um, that side of things. I've always been interested in that and inspired by that. It's similar with their cocktails. Everything seems to be served so much more elegantly, especially some of the mobile bars in LA. Um, yeah. Called the Wailing Club, that's just incredible. Um, wow. Some of the stuff they do is really, really, really nice. Um, um, I like to look at um, areas that are being done that are slightly different. Um, we've always tried to um, be a benchmark up, up north at least um, with how we approach, especially the wedding bars. Yeah. Um, there's, I found a couple of years ago, nothing was really happening. Everyone was just serve, serving your standard cocktails, your gin, yeah. beers, and just it was almost like a rotating scheme. Whereas we've kind of tried to mix it up with the cocktails and people's faces on, like cocktails with rice paper. We were doing that two years ago. Yeah. Uh, I know they're becoming quite popular now. Um, smoking cocktails again, something we've been doing for a very long time. Yeah, ago, I remember um, we're at the Highfield House. Over. Yeah, with the uh, lavender. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, one of my favourite cocktails. One of my favourite cocktails. It's gorgeous. Um, and I picked that cocktail up from oh, the Booking Club in London. It was a, a restaurant I went to uh, yeah. down Wednesday um, Adele when Adele bloody cancelled, didn't she? Um, so I went to uh, went to the Booking Club and I, I tried that cocktail. It was amazing. Um, so try to recreate it afterwards, um, and and yeah, the lavender lady is gorgeous. It's, it takes yeah. the photo so nice as well. How and, funny chatting about that and Hog and Apple have just joined. So hi, uh, Jeff. I know he is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm going to need to get his Sunday roast for this weekend. I've heard that. Uh, Seen that? Yeah. Yeah, he's got. Yeah, I've got to get uh, get onto that. I don't know how you can get one of those special meals. Um, but yeah, the that I mean that event was incredible, um, and that event. Yeah. That venue is amazing. It's such a beautiful venue. Um, oh, I say hello. <laughs> um, that amazing yeah. bar and the kind of yeah, oh, it was. It was just gorgeous, and all of those. And equally, talking of cocktails, you can do amazing mocktails as well. Yeah, completely, I think it's completely. 
because if you've got pregnant ladies um you know people are going to drive um people just don't drink um to how to keep to keep them kind of um part of it it's like when you're doing vegetarian or vegan or gluten-free all of there is all those catering requirements equally the drink for the non-drinkers have to be interesting so you've come up with amazing mocktails too yeah. and i think um that area is becoming more and more prevalent now um like you're finding a lot more non-alcoholic beer options which is amazing because the yeah. drivers and the, the, the girls that are pregnant people that just don't want to drink um i mean i don't drink that much i'm drinking a lot more than i expected to work yes. lockdown. i'm not gonna lie a two-year-old is a Me too. um but a lot of people don't drink so so providing options and there's a wide array of non-alcoholic spirits um, beers wines um approved like there's a lot of different options coming out um, and it's how we can be creative with them in the same way that we are with cocktails and beer um, and i think that's important so we um we started developing for this year um, a completely mocktail menu so you had an alcoholic menu but you also had a mocktail menu or yeah. a non-alcoholic menu even um, so all of our bars now come with a couple of uh, non-alcoholic beers, a lager and a craft. That's um, yeah. Similarly, some mocktail options and some some wine. Um, now, we're not going to have as much stock as that because we won't, of course, shift it as much. Yeah. Um, but we're going we're gonna to trial it, see how it goes, see how we do on the stock perspective, and that'll give us a better idea of the, yeah. the stock requirements as we move forward with it. But it is an extremely important part. Um, and going back to your question with regards to the cocktails and where we get our inspiration from, I think from a from a bar perspective, um, when I spoke before about making exceptional drinks and experiences, I think my inspiration comes from trying to create an experience and create something that's different. Yeah. Um, I want people to go wow when they have a cocktail. Yeah. Um, but that's the atmosphere that's surrounded with it, like the smoke statesman and the smoke. And um, and you've seen it at your events where as soon as you start smoking a old fashioned thing, where there's decanters, I think everybody orders it. Um, yeah. And then I've had people order it, take a sip of it, and go, no, not for me. But they've ordered it because they just love the theatric side of things. Yeah. Simply, people have absolutely loved it because it had that atmosphere and that theatrics, and also tasted amazing. Yeah. Um, I know you've seen the bubble machine that we had yeah. one recently. Uh um oh, what's he said what the it's going to, people will be drinking cocktails at weddings again well you did just say someone's postponed to november didn't you so yeah yeah i mean hopefully sooner rather than later um mm. uh, we've got weddings in september actually um really yeah and we've got weddings in september that have been postponed um october november to be honest i'm just taking every week as it comes yeah uh, which I, I think we all are. Um, I'm hoping for hoping for the best. Um, yeah. If we can get in some October and September weddings, that'd be amazing. Um, but um, the most important thing is everybody being safe. Like, yeah. Um, as a planner, I, I kind of I perhaps come across as slightly. Um, I'm a really optimistic person, and this yeah. is. What I'm about, but I'm also realistic because. I just, as a planner, I want my couples to be happy and I want them to have the wedding that we've planned. And I do feel as though any time this year that's going to happen because I feel as though there'll be smaller weddings. There'll also be people um, attending the weddings if they can. There'll be a lot of people that can't um, for health reasons or travelling international. You know, I'm meant to be going abroad twice this year, but I can't. Um, yeah. well, I feel as I won't be able to because it keeps changing doesn't it uh, and then you have to you know isolate when you get back and all of that so I keep saying to my couples keep hold of your date for this year like you know we've discussed with the weddings we've got together keep hold of the date um but then choose your date for next year um so you've got a positive thing to look forward to if you know if you can't have it this year but I just feel as though if they do take place this year they'll be smaller people will be a bit more hesitant they won't be mm. quite Buggy, and I just think that's not a wedding that we've planned. It's such a social, huggable kind of like you know every, we're doing it as an industry, don't yeah. we? So I think it's going to be next year for for the proper, and I think um, they will just be bigger and better and more. Oh, definitely, definitely, they're going to be. The party we're going to have next year are going to be good, um, yeah. and and I mean, there's an area of the intimacy weddings that I really like. Yeah, I, I mean, I love I love that concept in some aspects. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, a, a wedding should be a party. Yeah. Uh, my wedding was a party. It was just a, a big invite for my friends to just get drunk. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people are. Yeah. Um, so 
yeah, I kind of the way I, the way I look at it is next year is going to be amazing. It's going to be yeah. mental, and everyone's going to have a massive blowout and kind of go, uh, look, we didn't get to celebrate our wedding this year, so we're going we're going to really enjoy it. Yeah, I've had a bride bless her who's already rescheduled twice because she rescheduled in September. Yeah, she's kind of she's taken the bit of bullet a bit and gone. Look, I'm going to do it for April. Um, we have a friend actually who's getting married, and we gave, I gave her a bit of advice with regards to her wedding. Um, she was getting married in August. Um, mm -hmm. She was really worried, a bit back and forth. She didn't know whether it was going to happen. And I said, look, from talking to my brides and grooms, they basically said that. Um, the best thing they've done is take the control into their hands. Yes, exactly. Gone, exactly. Um, because at the moment, everyone's worrying. Yeah. Um, and you end up not knowing what's the news going to be. So, exactly. you know, yeah. And I think she, she basically said, like, look, she'd been crying for the last week because she just, she didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. Um, and I said, look, I would say, if either make a plan B and know that you have a plan B in your head and kind of mm. get it booked up, get it lined up, speak to all your suppliers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> decision to postpone it and look forward to that day yeah um, and i mean it's really that's a really tough decision because you've been building that up for so long some people for four or five years like you, you yeah know what it's like um some people have been together for 10 years yeah exactly it's so so hard it's we well, are yeah, gonna be where well, you've gone again <laughs> oh, sorry 10%. <laughs> um but Definitely. yeah some people have, a hard decision have been it? engaged for a long time yeah. Um, and they were really looking forward to this. Um, but at the same time, um, you've got to make sure that all your guests are safe. Yeah. You've got to make sure that you're safe. Um, from my perspective, I want to make sure that all my team are safe. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable sending anyone out until we know, until we have a, a solution to kind of to provide yeah. the service. And, and understand how we provide that service and what guidelines are in place. Yeah. But we're not the experts in any of this. No. Um, but, but I mean... Yeah, we will definitely get there. Oh, completely. Completely. And then, yeah. It'll come back and it'll be it'll be bigger and better than ever. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to see a lot of good parties that come Yeah, up. yeah, can't wait. So, yeah. I, standing at your bar, are you going to show us how to make a cocktail? Yeah, so I was going to show you how to make one of our newer cocktails. Uh, I've been playing around with a new gin on the market. Um, uh, so this is a uh, springtime bloom. Is that the one um, I was I believe you might have this bottle, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So you make that yourself, then? I do. I do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we kind of last night we started making our own gin. Um, just thought it'd be something a bit different. Um, no, there's a lot of gin on the market. There's a lot of gin on the market, and we wanted to make something that was different. We didn't want to have a liqueur or a flavoured gin. Um, and we didn't want to just have a dry gin that was just licorice, orange root, lemon, yeah. etc. Um, so we went about making this one over here, which is not much left in the bottle. Um, so this was Midsummer's Nights. Oh, yes. Uh, which is a floral gin um, yeah. with citrus undertones. So very much lavender, rose heavy, uh, and then citrusy. Um, then we had quite a lot of demand over Christmas for a Christmas gin. So we made ah, Wild Winter Berries, yeah. uh, which is. Uh, blueberries, damsons, um, slowberries, and Douglas fir. Um, so very much like blueberry heavy, lots of plumminess to it, and uh, uh, from the Douglas fir. Um, and then we started thinking, well, we've made a summer, we've made a winter, why don't we make a spring? Um, and this is my favourite gin I've made so far. Uh, so this is strawberries and pink peppercorn with lemon laburn and basil. It's quite a spicy gin. Yeah. Um, but the strawberry hints really, really um, come through. I don't know whether you've tried any yet. I don't uh, think I know. I don't because I'm still working on the other bottle. I well, you meant... I mean, open that bottle up. It won't last you very long. As I said, yeah. I'm getting through a bottle of this every couple oh. of days. Oh. It won't. Uh, be... But yeah. Are you meant to just drink it with normal tonic? Like a normal... Yeah, normal tonic. You don't need any garnishes. Just normal tonic. It, honestly, it's perfect on its own. Um, and yeah, it's so easy to drink. It's gorgeous. Um, yeah. I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, so yeah, so we're going to use this gin, um, and what we're going to make is a Yorkshire in bloom. Um, it's springtime at the moment, um, weather is supposed to really pick up in the next couple of days, which I'm excited for. Um, oh. Keep a little one entertained, that's for sure. Um, just trying to find where I put my ice quickly. I definitely had it somewhere. I was running around last minute trying to get myself sorted. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully. Ah, there it is. There we go. Oh, perfect. 
so yeah, so we've got um, some gin, we've got some apple juice, we've got some lemonade, okay. and we've got some jam. So with any leftover botanicals from our gin, we make a jam. Uh, so this is our springtime bloom jam. Uh, that being said, you can just use strawberry jam. So this is a strawberry left jam with a bit of basil in it, um, a bit of pink peppercorn. Strawberry jam will just do as well. Um, but this is going to be quite a nice fruity number, really easy to drink. Um, we're using the jam as a replacement for sugar syrup because not many people have sugar syrup at home. Oh, that's um, so, so the sweetness from the, the jam will come through quite nicely. Okay. Um, and the final bit you'll need is a little bit of lime juice, which I have somewhere along here. Perfect. So what you want to do is you want to put a spoonful of the jam in, um, a cocktail shaker or a jam jar if you've got a jam jar. Um, if not, you can put it into your glass and just give it a nice long stir. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. We want a bit of ice in it. Now, we want 50 ml of your gin. Um, now, as I said, I recommend our gin. Uh, you can get it on Yorkshire Explorer Spirits, or you can just get some of your gin that you have in your cupboard. Yeah. Um, of course, it'll, it'll taste nicer if it's with us, but you're welcome to, uh, to use any gin. Um, your gin online and just... Yeah, yeah, you can buy it online. So if you go to our website, uh, you can buy it online. It's 50... Sorry, it's 30 pound a bottle. Um, and then there's fifteen percent off at the moment if you use the code Explorer fifteen. Um, if you just follow us on Instagram, you'll be able to uh, to find the code. Um, and then we just have twenty five mil of lime juice. And you see, I was going to ask that. This is the, what annoys me. I can never be bothered to see limes. So, so you can buy it in a lime juice is amazing. So this is just pumpkin. Um, so it's just concentrated lime juice. It's what we use at most of our weddings to save squeezing limes because we spend yeah. most of our life doing it. Oh. Right. Um, so you can use lime juice or you can just get four lime wedges and squeeze it in. It gives you roughly about 25 minutes. Okay. Okay, so what you've got there, as I said, you've got apple juice, you've got gin, you've got lime juice, and you've got jam. Now we're going to give this a nice long hug. It's really sad though because I can't drink it. Just going to strain that through. Now you don't have to strain your uh, your drink. You can just throw it in, um, but it looks a bit nice to strain it. Oh, I'm going to need to get a strainer. Oh, that looks so nice. Yeah, it's super refreshing. Really, really, really. It refreshing. looks really refreshing. Pardon? It looks really refreshing. Oh, it's so easy to drink. And that's what you need right now, isn't it? Mm, yeah. I think everyone's getting a bit bored of just having a beer. Yeah, definitely. And then we're just going to top it up with a little bit of lemonade. So just give it a bit of a lemonade spritz. Oh, okay. Nice. Non-plastic straw. Very so good. So lots of have metal straws, or they have uh, bamboo straws. I mean, all of our bars come with paper straws now. They look after the environment and all that. But um, it's go soggy. I hate it when I was in a bar. Well, probably January time now. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, you drink it and then it goes soggy and you feel as though the straw's going to disintegrate. So yeah. they that will like. I mean, the straws that we get are quite, quite hard wearing. Um, <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they, they're, they're not kind of a lot of straws that you kind of find that are quite cheap and crappy with paper straws. Uh, these yeah. are really, really hard wearing. That being said, uh, you're going to have some compromise with not being a plastic straw. Mm. Uh, and I think people kind of, they get that, but they also understand that the damage that plastic straws can have. Yeah. Um, so it's good at weighing the bag as such. Um, we have looked at bamboo straws and kind of bringing those in. Um, but there's a cost perspective for bamboo straws. I've also started looking at like the pasta straws that you can get, and you might have seen you get pasta straws and edible straws. Wow. Uh, so there's kind of there's lots and lots and lots of options that are coming out, and people are getting more innovative with. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is about the, the production of it and the, the scalability of that production. Yeah. Um, especially when we're doing a wedding bar where we're serving out maybe a thousand drinks. Yeah. Uh, trying to trying to make that or manage that is it's much easier just to just get paper straws than it is to try and create your own. Yeah. Paper straws. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that looks amazing. Mm. I hope you're not going to waste it and you drink. Yeah, it. <laughs> it's really really good. Ah, uh, yeah. So um, yeah, the strawberries just come through really 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 nicely on it. Um, yeah. So there's hints of strawberry in there, but that strawberry jam's just superb. Yeah, um, that's and, yeah, and you can get the jam on the website as well. 
Um, but yeah, so that is the Yorkshire in Bloom. I'll put something up on the website to ha show people how to make it, um, and I'll put it on the Instagram page as well. I'll take a uh, photo. Well, yeah, well, uh, this this will be on my story for Amazing. the next browse, and then yeah, I'll put it on my YouTube as well, so people can see. So, cool. ah, well, it's been. I think I've got through all my questions. Thank you. You have, you have. I survived, so I was a bit worried. <laughs> no, you've done brilliantly, but anyone watching um but so if they're thinking of that kind of um they've either got engaged or they're yeah. thinking of the bar and they're drinking something you they can definitely um call you at the moment you're still working yeah, yeah, I'm still working yeah so it's just me at the moment um everyone else is furloughed um but i'm still working so i'm answering emails and whatnot I'm trying to navigate that and looking after a two-year-old so i'm a bit <laughs> slower um but i think people can understand that yeah. Um, yeah, so we're, we're still fully available. Um, as I spoke to you before, we offer everything from bespoke packages to, um, so you can do dry hire, you can do wet hire, you can do free bars. Um, if all bars come with cash and card facilities. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, talk to me about your day. Yeah. And how we can work together. Yeah, video chat with you and stuff. Yeah, okay. completely. Consultation, yeah. Completely. And we'll still be doing consultations when this is all over. Um, so they want to come back to the office and, um, yeah. and, watch that and try some of these cocktails. Yeah, I was about to say that. You do that, yeah. don't you? you do, they can come with you and try things and chat through everything. It's not just... Yeah, everybody does. So um, it's, that's one of the biggest shows that we've had is we've had literally every one of our brides or almost every one of our brides and grooms was at the, uh, came to the office for, for a tasting session. So we've yeah. done that. We've had that. Um, and... Um, and yes, yeah, so you get to try the wine, you get to try the cocktails. Yeah. We'll show off some of the fancy, fancy yeah. elements. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, cool. All good. right, Look, I'll leave you to it before my phone dies. Lovely yeah. speaking to you. You too. I'm going to uh, go make myself a gin now. <laughs> all right. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Don't speak to you soon. Bye. Bye, mate.